Let's send it down to Brandon Parker and Chris Wall with tonight's Flames TV postgame show presented by Original 16. Original 16, a great way to celebrate things done well. Welcome inside Flames TV Live. It's the postgame show brought to you by Original 16. The Calgary Flames on an early Saturday game. They welcome in an Original 6 opponent for a 5 p.m. start here in the Montreal Canadiens. And they get the job done here tonight with a big victory of 5-2 the final. And uh, they get some early scoring. They get some, uh, you know, a little pushback from the opposition here tonight. But uh, then find a way to close it down in the third period. Another well-played third by the Calgary Flames here tonight is uh, Brendan Parker alongside Chris Wall as we break things down here. On the postgame show, back-to-back -back wins for the Calgary Flames. And, uh, you know, a lot talked about in terms of uh, the veterans on this team getting together and meeting after a couple of tough losses. And, um, you know, that's been part of the conversation here. But I think, you know, the results speak for themselves in terms of what we've seen here on the ice from this group as well. Yeah, you look at it, two goals and an assist for Michael Backlund, a three-point night for Mackenzie Wieger, two-point nights as well for Huberto and Nazem Kadri. And, you know, really the, the key moment for me was that start of the second period. You get a goal 11 seconds into the middle frame. You get another one inside the four, or, you know, inside the eight-minute mark and really kind of break open what was a one-goal game at the time. And then the same thing happens in the third period where Montreal tries to claw back a little bit. You get a response early in the third period, another big goal, and kind of took it home from there. Well, and you kind of look at, uh, you know, the way that this game, you know, starts to play out in the third period and you get, uh, you know, contributions kind of throughout the lineup. But uh, you look at a guy like Michael Backlund and, uh, you know, I think it was Blake Coleman we talked a lot about in the postgame show, but that line really seemed to carry them on Thursday night against Vegas. And then it kind of comes back to it again in terms of Backlund playing a starting role. And uh, just prior to his 35th birthday, he picks up a couple of big ones, uh, not only in the game because uh, we knew those were big moments in this hockey game, um, but also just in, uh, in in terms of his personal uh, 200 career goals and, and 11th uh, all-time in Flames history. Just a significant uh, milestone for him tonight. Yeah, really nice moment and, uh, you know, gets acknowledged as well for uh, reaching that 200 goal milestone. And I think we joked at one point uh, kind of here watching the game, Brandon, about just you know, the total distance of where those goals came from. You yeah. look at the first goal, the deflection on the power play. The second goal, he just goes to the net. Yeah. And Coleman's able to kind of win a battle down below the goal line and, and send a puck out front into a high danger area. And Backlund's right there to scoop up the change. So, you know, just, uh, uh, again, leading by example and, and uh, a really solid contribution from the captain tonight. Well, we talk about him a little bit. Let's take a look at how it all goes down here tonight. Uh, we are expecting here uh, from numbers of uh, the Calgary Flames here on the Flames TV desk throughout the course of the show here tonight. But let's show you how uh, things get started. And uh, it was Michael Backlund that got the first two goals of the game. You described them well. And there you see uh, the positioning, maybe even the heels uh, touching the uh, the red of the crease there too. Yeah, and making life difficult for Caden Primo, right? He goes to the front of the net, tries to take away the eyes of the goaltender. And Uyghur doesn't you know, hammer the puck on that. Just tries to get it through and back on a good stick there to uh, to redirect it past the right arm of Primo for his uh, 14th of the season. Well, back said, just find my stick. And uh, Uyghur said, no problem. Yeah, I'll find a cap. And uh, he did exactly that on the first one. And the second one is uh, led into the rush by that number 52. And uh, he ends up getting that puck to the net. But uh, it's Blake Coleman that finds backs for his 200th NHL goal. Yeah, wins a battle again below the goal line, gets to a puck first. And Backlund again just Parked in front of the net, and Primo kind of overplayed a little bit, maybe the, the play out of the corner below the goal line, and Backlund takes full advantage. Closer to the midway point of the second period, you think kind of maybe the Flames start to pull away. They had some chances, and uh, this is where the pressure starts to go uh, onto the uh, Montreal Canadiens, and it's Martin Pospisil who comes in and cleans up the loose change there after uh, Huberto got it to the front of the net. I love this play by Pospisil because he goes to the net hard. He's known as a bit of a power forward kind of guy. I also love the spatial awareness here from Huberto not to interfere with the goaltender with that pass and, you know, kind of standing in his kitchen. Well said. Gives uh, gives a little bit of space just in time as uh, Pospisil comes in and scores the seventh of the season. Then Montreal, this is the pushback we're talking about. They get a couple of goals before the end of that middle frame and makes things interesting. This one is uh, an absolute no-doubter off the 2-1-1 little turnover in the offensive zone, but that's Cole Caulfield bearing his 20th of the season. 
Yeah, picture perfect placement on the shot. Nice pass across from Suzuki. If you're a Montreal fan, I mean, these are the guys that are going to carry the mail for the next uh, number of years for this franchise. And reason to be excited if you're a Habs fan about those two for sure. And uh, then late stages of that second period, Flames love to get out of the period, take that 3-1 lead in and hit the reset button. But uh, Montreal says, just hang on a second, we're going to close the gap a little bit. Tanner Pearson digs it out. And then the point shot, just no chance for Dustin Wolf to see that thing. And it takes about a four foot dip on its way down from David Spart. Yeah, the old knuckle puck, if you will, right? Uh, and, and, you know, again, Wolf uh, had lots of legs to try and look through to see that goal. And when it changes direction like that, it's, it's tough to kind of compensate and react quickly. So Savard gets uh, Montreal within one as we turn the page to the third period, but uh, here's where the Calgary Flames find a way to close it out. They get the man advantage, had one in the first period and then one now in the third period, and this was kind of daggers tonight as uh, Kadri finds it and uh, puts it through the five hole of Caden Proof. Yeah, game high seven shots for Nazem Kadri, and again, another really nice distribution from Huberdo out of the corner, and Kadri goes to the net, stick down, and easy tap in for him. So Huberto with a couple of assists on the night as well, and uh, that uh, would uh, all but seal it. But they'd get some insurance uh, either way as uh, Miramanov uh, throws it out front. The uh, shot from Uyghur and then cleaned up by Miramanov, his second as a flank. You know, for a guy who hasn't played a lot of hockey over the last couple of years, Brendan, Daniel Miramanov is just showing oodles of confidence out there and, you know, carries the puck down low and just finds himself in a, in a perfect spot to grab that loose puck and bang home his second as a flame. Perfect timing as we wrap up the highlights on the post-game show. Uh, we'll welcome in one of the stars of the night, uh, Mackenzie Weger. I think three assists on there, and uh, highly, highly sought after in the uh, <coughs> in the highlight pack as well. Uh, maybe just let a thought on on the win because, you know, I think we saw a little bit of pushback there from mm. Montreal, but uh, kind of didn't let you guys uh, get deterred at all, and and found a way to get it done there in the third. Yeah, I, I thought our special teams were the 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 bigger reason why we won tonight. Five on five, I thought there were times where Wolfie came up big for us. They had a lot of ozone time. Um, but our power play came up clutch twice, and our penalty kill was as it's been great all season. But we we uh, we did the job again tonight, so that's that's kind of what I thought tonight. Power play, you mentioned mm -hmm. two goals, right? And and different styles of goals too. Yeah. You look at uh, the the first one where you, you just put a puck to the net, and then mm -hmm. a bit of working it around the perimeter on the on the cadre goal too. Just I mean, how much confidence does that give you guys in terms of? knowing that you can find offense on that power play in different ways. Yeah, I, you know, I was thinking tonight, I don't know why it came to my head, but randomly just thinking our power play hasn't, you know, won us a game in, in quite a while. And, um, you know, tonight I, I thought it was a difference maker. But just, you know, my goal just getting, or Bax's goal, getting it to the net, simple. Our unit usually isn't out there for that, that long. So we just try to get pucks to the net. Bax is in front. Usually Colsey's there as well. But, and then that first unit, they executed a great, face-off play that Savvy designed. I got to give him a shout-out because he'd get upset, but uh, <laughs> they did the job there too, so uh, happy to see the power play get us going. Well, let's uh, let's talk about the captain for a minute because, mm -hmm. uh, Big, you, he said uh, you guys talked a little bit about it, uh, find yeah. the stick in front, but uh, after that, also to get 200 career goals, I mean, that's Pretty elite company in the franchise, and yeah. uh, and I think just a few hours before his 35th birthday too. Yeah. So not bad for the captain. What an old geezer now. <laughs> uh, no, he's great. You know, he's he's special player. Uh, he's obviously a legend in this city, but um, you know, he I think he's so consistent every year. He's he's consistent. You know what you're going to get from him. But this year, I think he's taken a step. You know, been a great. Great leader in the room, great leader for us. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm happy to get an assist on, you know, a great moment for him. Yeah. Um, but he deserves all, all, all of it. You know, he's a stand-up guy. He's, he's just the salt of the earth, and uh, I'm happy that he, he's here and he's our leader. What's, What's it been like playing with Daniel Miramanov? I mean, this mm -hmm. is a guy that we didn't really know a lot about, right, when he was acquired from Vegas and really seems to have settled in uh, yeah. into a top four role on that blue line. Yeah, it's it's been easy to play with him. He uh, He's a smart player. You can tell he's got a lot of poise out there, a lot of confidence with the puck. Um, yeah, I've said this a few times now, but, you know, I think he's also said it to you guys. He wants to be one of the top D-men in the league. Um, and you can tell he's eager, you know, to get up there. He's making plays. He sees the ice super well. Um, you know, my passes off the pads tonight were, were great. Uh, great <laughs> pass. That, yeah. Um, but he's been, he's been great to play with. Um, you know, our, the communication with him and I are great. He talks, obviously, uh, good English. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just been a, a treat to play with him so far. It's kind of given me a spark. And, um, you know, we're playing well together. 
Yeah, it's looked good. Great stuff tonight. And uh, good news is uh, you help backs out, so you don't, there's no birthday present needed for tomorrow. You already took no. care of it tonight. Yeah, so, no. I, I already give him too many too many <laughs> gifts every day, being in my presence. Yeah, so. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm Presence joking. is the gift. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll have a great night, uh, you yeah. know, celebrating his birthday for sure. Absolutely. Good stuff tonight. Congrats on the win, and yeah. uh, congrats on the, uh, the assist as well. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank Mackenzie Weegar stopping by the desk. Always good to chat up uh, with uh, Weegs. And uh, a big victory, 5-2 uh, the final over the Montreal Canadiens. Let's uh, head inside the room and get some reaction as well. Let's uh, hear from one of the other stars of the night, Jonathan Huberto of Paris. Does it still mean something to play against the, the Habs? Yeah, every time uh, you know, play against them, I, you know, try to obviously feel like when I got to the league, I started like hating them. <laughs> you know, you, you love them when you're young and you're, you're a big fan. Watch a lot of games, but obviously, you know, it's always special playing against them and you want to get, get the win for, for the guys. And uh, that's what we did tonight. So. Have you noticed even in Florida that there's different juice in the building when when the Habs come to town? Yeah, I was surprised here. Like you know, there's there's a lot of fans. Like I, I didn't expect that, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. I think it brings a lot of atmosphere in the building. And um, you know, like I said, I think Montreal fans are, you know, they, they kind of go everywhere. Obviously, they follow the team. So expected that. But you know, our crowd was good tonight. What uh, what was your best assist tonight? Uh, I don't know. That's uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to make plays out there. Obviously, I know the fans wants me to shoot, and I can hear it in the crowd. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I try try to. <laughs> that's what I that's what I do. So obviously it was uh, nice. I think possibly had a you know empty net. So probably the, the, this one was good. What did you think of Dustin Wolf's game tonight? Um, I mean, he's past, you know, last game was unbelievable tonight again. So it's it's good. I think he's, he's a solid goalie. And, uh, you know, he's taking advantage of uh, some playing time right now. I know the, the power play has been sort of up and down this year. In a close game, opening the third period, how good a deal to get the get on the board and get up? Yeah, it, w it was good. I mean, uh, it was Savvy's face-off play, so he was pretty happy with that. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of stuck with it. And, you know, we, we didn't have great power plays in the game, but I think at crucial time, we, we would capitalize. Jonathan, Lanny McDonald's been retired for 35 years now. And as a player, when you see a guy get that sort of reaction from the fans all these years later, what kind of goes through your mind? It's, it's crazy. I mean, this guy impressed me, you know, all the time. He's, he's always around. He's, you know, we had the, the father's trip. He was around us and make, making all the dads happy. And, you know, it, he's just he's just awesome. And I think, you know, you can tell, like, with the, I mean, he's done so much on the ice, you know, for, for the franchise. And now he, that he's, you know, done playing, like, for 35 years, he's just been around and he's helping the, you know, the franchise to get better. And he's, uh, you know, he's a model for, for me since I got here. I mean, you know, we, we didn't really hear from him when I was in, in, uh, in Florida, but, well, right now, you can see how, how good of a person he is, and yeah, it shows. That ovation was a pretty cool moment, yeah. wasn't it? And it was, you know, scary what happened to him, and it was good to see him back, you know, smiling and, and be in, in the building with us. I, I know you kind of touched on it, but can you go into more detail on what your relationship with Lanny is like? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, with all the struggle, so I got here, he was, you know, he's the one that was reaching out to me and, you know, a lot, a lot of nice texts and trying to get, you know, be positive with me and stuff like that. A couple chats and, you know, that, that means a lot. I think when you're going through these, this kind of phase, it's, it's always good to have these guys, you know, supporting you. And he was one of them. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, sir. Some good stuff there from Jonathan Huberto, both on the uh, the game and then, of course, Lanny McDonald, which uh, we'll talk about here tonight as well. Just an outstanding ovation, a great moment in the first period, uh, second TV timeout, and just uh, a passionate salute from the Sea of Red. And uh, you could also see the uh, the Calgary Flames bench uh, as well acknowledging it. Uh, we'll show you that as the post-game show rolls along. But uh, I also want to talk about Dustin Wolf because he got lots of attention, uh, of course, Thursday night in the victory and then does so again tonight uh, with the 36 saves on the night and just... Kind of the backbone. You heard Weeks say that uh, in our interview, just that they relied on him a little bit at, at times in moments of this hockey game, and uh, he got it done for him. Yeah, and we're looking at this save he made in the first period uh, there where he kind of lunges across his crease, a bit of a desperation stop. Felt maybe that kind of was what settled him in this game a little bit, Brendan. I mean, from then on, he was just lights out, positionally sound, and, and really was doing a great job of tracking pucks as well over the course of the night. 36 saves, uh, the third highest total in his young NHL career uh, to this point. 
And back-to-back -back wins for the first time in his career as well, getting an opportunity to get right back in there after Thursday's performance. And uh, now we'll see what happens coming up uh, next week uh, as we look ahead to uh, Monday night uh, against the Washington Capitals. But let's first hear from Dustin Wolf his 36 save performance tonight. I feel even better than the last game, or? <laughs> you know what? I'm just trying to take advantage of every opportunity I get right now. And, um, you know, two wins in a row is pretty crucial for for our group, so. Your comfort level, does it improve every single game or would you say we see the confidence you have? Have you been comfortable throughout? Yeah, I think so. I think every every time you get to play more more minutes, um, you know, you feel more and more comfortable. And, um, you know, I saw a lot of rubber today, so it kind of got me into the game pretty quick. And, um, you know, we put up five, so, you know, it makes my life pretty easy right there. Do those crease battles feel a little bit different at this level? Like you have the Brendan Gallagher experience today, but you have your guys working to get him out. Is it, how different is that from the NHL? Yeah, I mean, like I've said before, everybody's so much more mature physically, and um, you know, it certainly makes your life a little more difficult. But um, at the end of the day, you love battling, and um, you know, it kind of makes it fun. And our D did an outstanding job of boxing guys out and letting me see pucks, and um, you know, big props to them. What did you see on the save you made on Cole Coffee? Uh, you're gonna have to refresh my memory on this one. That's the one where he, I think, what, the second period, he makes the move on on Daniel Marimanov, and he's on his knees and he tries to. You're kind of sprawling and making the save. Yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've been around Cole quite a bit yeah. uh, throughout my career, and um, you know, I thought I, he had the puck quite a bit on, on his stick throughout the game. And, um, you know, he got me on that one. I missed it by you know a fraction of an inch, but um, you know, good play by him. And you know, hopefully, looking forward to, uh, to seeing him more. Did you you figure to pass was going the one you're talking about that you just missed? You had, you had to anticipate where that was going. Uh, I mean, they had two um, opportunities prior where they came in and shot, so I chose to take a little bit more ice, expecting them to maybe you know take a couple more steps in, and um, you know, a good play by him. He made the pass real early and made it difficult for me to get over there. And um, you know, had I been maybe a little more deeper, I might have had a little extra chance to get over there, but. Um, you know, put good players make good plays. I, uh, I know goalies get pretty dialed in, but were you aware of what was going on when Lanny was getting the sort of welcome back at the TV timeout? You know, I'm, I was trying to stay as dialed as I can, but I know, um, you know, obviously he's a very important figure here, and, um, you know, he's had some stuff go down, you know, in the last couple of months, and um, obviously prayers went out to him when, when it happened, but, um, you know, it's awesome to see him back here. Thanks, Yep. So back-to-back -back wins for Dustin Wolf and the Calgary Flames. He was sensational tonight. 36 saves against the Montreal Canadiens. And, uh, yeah, I mentioned uh, Cole Caulfield briefly there, but uh, their history goes back uh, quite a ways into the uh, USA hockey program, and uh, he was able to get a couple of stops on, uh, on uh, Cole Caulfield tonight. Uh, all right, let's uh, quickly reset. We'll go back inside and listen to uh, Michael Backlund. Uh, he, of course, he gets his two goals tonight, 15 now on the season, but uh, more importantly, his 200th of his National Hockey League career, just the 11th player in franchise history to hit that milestone, and uh, we get a chance to hear from him now. Can you see what it says, though? Yeah. 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 Camera? <laughs> <laughs> You're not really a big camera. No, I'm not. You should backwards. That's true. Everything, anything for the foundation. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we were talking earlier about Lanny getting that ovation as a as a captain. Now, what does it mean to you to see that happen and that love in for Lanny? No, oh, it was great. Uh, I was super excited to see him back in the building, and you know, I've uh, texted a little bit with him when he was uh, uh, you know sick and not doing well. So it's good to see him uh, recovering and being back out and about. When when you see that sort of reaction for a guy who you know was one of your predecessors and did what he did on the ice, but you know that was a long time ago. What like? As a current player, what goes through your head in that moment? Um, I was just really excited to see him here. Um, he's, I know how much he means for the city and for this organization. And, you know, he's around a lot. Um, and it's always great to see him. He's such a great person. And uh, he cares so much about the city of Calgary and, and the Calgary Flames organization. So, uh, you know, him and Patter has come on the that trip twice now. And it's such a great time every time to have them there. They're, they're awesome. So. Uh, I can't thank Lani enough for, for what it does for the community, the city of Calgary, and for our team. We uh, saw you leave for a few minutes and then come back and get three points. Do you have a new routine <laughs> or something? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, 
but yeah, I can't say much more on that. But <laughs> what happened? Are you able to say what happened that made you leave for a couple of minutes? Or? Uh, I just had to, uh, uh, just uh, yeah, had to. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't like you know who be taking going to wash them. How do you how do you feel about a game like this? I know you know a lot of guys are in big milestone guys. You get 200 goals. You uh, tie Guy Schwenard for I think eighth on the Flames franchise list. Is a night like this significant for you? Yeah, I uh, feel special scoring 200 goals for sure in this league. Uh, um, oh, you know, I put in a lot of work in my life to get to the NHL and to be able to score 200 goals is very special and. Um, I uh, took longer than I, uh, you know, I, was get, I got close there early January scoring, so the 196 or 197 or something like that, and it seems to take forever to get to 200, so it feels really good to get it, and uh, yeah, especially get, get here, all the goals, of, obviously here in Calgary too, um, some good company um, here in the organization, can history. You just, can you describe goal 200 as you saw it? That was pretty easy tapping. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, great play by Colsey uh, from the back in front of the net, and uh, I didn't have to do too much, but uh, I felt good. Michael, there's, I think you've got 15 games left in the regular season. Six points out as of tonight. What's the emotional temperature of this group right now? What's your, what's your headspace like? Uh, well, we're a lot more excited today than we were uh, after that road trip and after the Colorado game. It, it, you know, it was tough uh, losing those three games. and. Um, but we have some good meetings and uh, a couple, you know, optional or non skates here between games, and guys got a little more energized. And uh, we played some two good games here, and um, now we're just taking it day by day, and um, you know, um, trying to just focus on the next game and see where it takes us. After these last couple of games, do you sort of feel like you're back to where you guys want to be in terms of your team game? Yeah, for sure. I thought we play, especially Vegas, was a really good team game today. I thought at times we were a little slow and. Uh, but Montreal is a quick team, uh, but I thought we played a lot better these two games than we did the three games before. And uh, um, seems like the team's getting back out a little bit. It's kind of a over the years or over this year, it's been a it's a brand almost a brand new team now, a group. Uh, so, um, but I feel like we're uh, getting to know each other more and more, and uh, get more and more you know get to know each other on the ice as well. And everything. I'm impressed by the composure of your goalie. Yeah, he's been really good these last two games. He's uh, such a smart goalie. He reads the play really well, and like you said, very composed. So um, another good game from him. If you know, he, it's the main reason why we won today. Uh, they outshot us. Maybe I don't know if they outscored us or outchanced us, but uh, he for sure had a really good game. Original 16, a great way to celebrate things done well. See if Red make some noise and welcome back to the Saddle Dome, the one, the only, number nine, Lanny McDonald. Well, that's the moment uh, we referenced and heard from some of the players here in the postgame show, and uh, that was spectacular. That was in the first period, and uh, and a and a true welcome back to uh, the legend Lanny McDonald uh, into the Scotiabank Saddle Dome, and uh, looks great. Uh, so happy to see him back where he belongs, right here in uh, in and around the Flames and uh, and the Saddle Dome, and just a really awesome moment. Obviously, celebrating the '89 Cup team uh, nearing the 35th anniversary of their. Stanley Cup championship over the Montreal Canadiens, uh, hence uh, the significance of tonight. And, um, you know, I thought, uh, you know, we said it, a couple of the guys said it, uh, they felt that moment too. And uh, you could see them standing up and saluting as well. You see Lanny pointing down to the bench, but, um, you know, he's a guy that, uh, despite the fact that it's been some time since he played on the ice here, he is so well known and so much beloved in this community. And you could kind of feel it both from the fans and from the players here tonight. Yeah, and he's still so involved with yeah. the team and the community and the players know that and you know certainly we were all worried when he yeah. had the health scare and it, it was really great like you said to see him here and to see him looking so good yeah. tonight and the players they notice stuff like that right and you know it, it just brings a feeling of comfort perhaps right. uh, to to everyone who knows him and is close with them and has had interacted with him so 
no, it, uh, it was a really nice moment and got the got the ovation he deserved. Yep, and got the building going a little bit here uh, in the first period as well. All right, let's hear from uh, the head coach of the Calgary Flames. Here's Ryan Huska now uh, following the 5-2 victory from his team, second consecutive wins. Coach, how did you, you feel about this game? Um, well, there was, I feel like there was a lot of stretches where we liked what we did. There was, I don't think it was as complete of a game as we saw the couple nights ago in regards to the team side of things. Um, but we, for me, we found goals at the proper time of the game when we needed to score. We scored and our power play got two for us tonight. So that's a huge, huge thing for us. Let's talk about the role that your goaltender played again tonight. Yeah, I thought he was excellent. Early on, he was calm and composed again. and. He looked like he was in total control. So he said back to back good games. Ryan, how would you describe that moment where Lanny gets the sort of welcome back from the crowd here? Yeah, it's uh it, it was a cool thing. Like I normally don't notice things on the bench, but that one I did. Um, and he's been a guy that's traveled with us on some of our dad's trips and He's like, you know, I don't want to call him, he'll get mad at me, a, the grandpa to a lot of the guys. <laughs> like, they love having him around. Um, and even the day after all this stuff went on, he was texting me back and forth. And he, he's just such a, a great person to have around. He means so much to the city and organization that it was really nice to see him back in here again tonight. And it was even better to see the type of emotion that the crowd had for him as well. Think you'll get a text about the grandpa? Right? I don't know. Maybe keep that out of the media. <laughs> Coaching is a small world. Uh, I, I don't. Know how, I don't know how well you know Marty Saint Louis, but uh, you know, have you had any contact with him today? And what can you say about what he's? No, I, I don't know him at all. I mean, the only time I've met him was in Montreal, and I was in the hotel um, where we stay, and I saw him walk by, and I just waved. <laughs> That's all I know. I know of him as the player, um, but I don't have any personal relationship with him. Not to go back on Lionel McDonald, but Huberto mentioned to us that he was coming here and he was going through his struggles, that he was someone that he would text a lot and he would offer a lot of support. What do you know about that relationship between those two men and, and your impressions of, of how Lanny, a legend in this city, has helped a player like Jonathan Huberto get settled in? Yeah, and that's maybe what about Lanny right there is I knew nothing about that. That's the first I've heard of it. So I, I think he has a real good understanding of, hey, when someone might need a text and someone might need a pat on the back. and. Um, he's been a good friend, I think, to all of us, um, which is the coolest part. And the players, like I said, they love him. Um, uh, and he's he's been a blast to have around on road trips, and I can't wait to get him back on some other ones. What were your impressions of Martin Pospisil tonight? Um, I thought Marty was good tonight. Um, he, when he uses his speed, uh, I think he makes that line go. Um, it, it, it opens up room for Jonathan and, and you know, Naz, Naz has been Naz all year long, but I think he does a great job of driving the play for that line. Or are you kind of amazed how he seems to be getting under the skin of the likes of Marchand and Suzuki? Like, like is it is it kind of how you feel about, about his ability to do that? Um, well, we like it. I mean, sometimes you like to have more players like that. You know, he's uh, right from when they they found him as a younger player, he had that bit of edge to him, and it's gone away a little bit the last couple of years because of some of his injury issues that he's had. But he's finding out how to play the style of game we need him to play. Um, tonight, you have to be careful with some of the penalties that y you're going to take because that can put you in a tough spot. But we don't ever want to take that edge away from him because that's what makes him an effective player. What's it like trying to tow that line for him? Oh, you want to that's OK. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, just with Martin, since the suspension, what's it been like trying to get him to stay on that line and not step over it? Uh, he's been fine. I mean, he gets it at the end of the day, but there is you have to let him be who he is. And I think by him missing a few of those games, he understands you know, the, the difference between right and wrong. So he gets it. Um, Ryan, got 15 regular season games left, six points out tonight. What's the headspace mindset of this team right now? Um, it's to win our next game. And it, honestly, we've been that way all year long. So we, uh, if we can find a way to win our next game, um, then we stay relevant, I guess you can say. And our, our players, they have to find a way to stay tight as a team. And that's got nothing to do with where we are in the standings, but that's when we play our best hockey. So really the most important part of things is that they do that and they stay consistent with it. Coach, your captain left for a few minutes, returned, scores his 200th goal, yeah. has three points. Maybe a thought on his evening? Same thing for him. He was awesome tonight. Um, 
again, you look to your leaders all the time. Uh, Michael's been fantastic this year, and I really feel like he's elevated his play on the ice for us this year in a lot of different situations. But um, for me, being able to work with him on a daily basis and see how he's handled the room, he's been fantastic. So it's nice to see him get that goal or goals for us tonight. Ryan, a, a couple of goals so far, not both tonight, but a couple so far for Miramanov will kind of jump out for a bunch of us. But what? What struck you most about what you've seen in, I think, five games from him so far? Um, he's got he's got great poise with the puck. That's one thing with him, and I feel like the more that he plays and the more that he feels like, yeah, I'm in here now, I think you're going to see it even get better and better. Um, I you Sometimes when you look at players like that, you're like, geez, does he get nervous? Does he feel the pressure? Because he's got that kind of vibe about him where he's like, ah, no problem, I got this taken care of. And it um, takes me a little bit to get used to, those type of guys for sure. But he's got great poise with the puck. And I think, as I mentioned, the more we see him, the better he's going to continue to get. Has McKenzie been his best partner? Or his best fit for him? Uh, so far, yeah. I think McKenzie's game over the last two or three, they've been the best that he's played in quite a while too. He's been simple, but he's been hard and he's been effective. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. All right, there's uh, some thoughts from head coach Ryan Huska as we put a wrap on this 5-2 uh, win as the Calgary Flames win back-to-back -back games and uh, put a nice little bow on things in terms of uh, what he saw from uh, a number of different things, including uh, the salute to Lanny McDonald. And uh, as we kind of put our bow on things here today, maybe just the thought as we kind of wrap up and, and look ahead to the uh, homestand finishing up uh, one day night. You got the Washington Capitals coming into town, but finally kind of some momentum back on the positive side and building on what you know they've been talking about over the last couple of days. And I think that seems to be substantial in terms of the room and the feeling among that group trying to keep their playoff hopes alive here. Yeah, and we heard it earlier in the week, Brendan, where kind of after that Colorado game on Tuesday night, they kind of had a day to reset. I think Mackenzie Weger was actually the guy who said that uh, in his uh, media availability before mm -hmm. Thursday's win over Vegas. And it seems like that's paid off, right? Because you had the road trip, a lot of travel, and combined yeah. with the trade deadlines, sure. a pretty emotional time for everybody. And now you've kind of strung together back-to-back -to -back performances where you've had some success, you've done some things right in all phases of the game, you've had two really nice performances from Dustin Wolf between the pipes. And yeah, it gives you some momentum going up against another team in Washington on Monday night that's kind of in a similar spot, right? Uh, wanting to try to keep their kind of place their relevance in the Eastern Conference playoff picture and yep. it should be an interesting night to wrap up this four game homestand. Obviously uh, getting into the uh, final stretch run for the Calgary Flames and everyone else in the National Hockey League but uh, two more big points here tonight as they knock off the Montreal Canadiens 5-2 the final uh, big performance from that man who was laser focused uh, 36 saves back to back wins for him. Kadri has his hand all over this as well with a goal and an assist. Mackenzie Weger with the hat trick of assists and then of course it's Michael Backlund's night uh, just ahead of his 35th birthday he ends up picking up a three-point night including a pair of goals in his 200th of his National Hockey League career joining the likes of that man right there Lanny McDonald among the franchise's elite we'll sign off from tonight and look ahead of the Capitals coming up on Monday night to close out the homestand thanks for watching Flames Post Game Live it's brought to you by Original 16 we'll see you on Monday night